looking up in this hole here where this hinge is at, the upper hinge pocket. The lower one, of course, turned out looks really good. But the upper one, I peel this back so I can get in here with a weld and weld to the inner metal that's in here. This is the strength, the rigidity of this A-pillar is created by this piece. So I'm going to weld that into here and then we're going to push this piece back and weld that back together. That should be good. We'll create a patch for over here and then on the inside, which we can get to from inside the trunk, up in here, you know, front trunk area, I can actually add the patch from the, uh, the other side. Now before I get to any of that, up here, of course, I'll check because it might be easier to come in through here too. So, got some things to think about. But we are going to weld that in right now and we're going to close up the bottom of this immediately.
Hey everybody, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> We're back today with my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. And as you know, I've been working on the hinge pockets over here on the passenger side, and we're almost done. We're almost done. You probably saw me doing some of the welding, some of the grinding. I'm going to finalize that hopefully today and get that thing squared away and finished, get the door mounted on and make sure everything fits just like it's supposed to. And I've got a good feeling about it. i got a good feeling. I did a lot of measurements. This, this side was, yeah, there was a lot of experimentation that went into it. And uh, <laughs> as a result, when I, when I cut it apart and made things fit together, I kind of butchered it. I had to make a mess out of things. It's just that's just what it took to make it work properly the first time. Now, now that I know what I do, I'll be able to transfer that knowledge over to the driver's side and uh, hopefully get that thing done a whole lot faster. And if I get lucky and nobody interrupts me, my damn phone don't ring, it might even turn into a one video project. Uh, I'm not going to hold my breath, but <laughs> we'll see, because this is what, part 10 right now of the, uh, the hinge saga. So yeah, 10 parts is just, it's too long, too long. But I gotta admit, I didn't put that much work into each one of the videos. You know, it's only a couple hours into each video because, well, what happens? I get interrupted, the damn phone rings, and yeah, you know how it goes. Anyways, as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle bell. We get updates every time I upload a video. Don't forget to check out Earl, duckshit.net forward slash CCC. That's right, you will find Earl's YouTube channel, and he's going to be the guy who's gonna do the final body work, all that beautiful fill and sanding and all that stuff that I just, I can't get into. That's not my area of expertise. So check out duckshit.net forward slash CCC. That's Earl's YouTube channel. CCC stands for Classic Car Creations, in case you didn't know. And I'm glad I got that out of my mouth on the first try. Usually I mess that one up, but <laughs> check him out. Subscribe to him. He's going to be doing the final potty work on, on Eleanor, and that's probably where the car will be for about four or five months. I would say probably sometime middle of winter is when she's going to come home and then go back together. And if I get lucky, she might make it to the show season this coming spring, you know, in 2020. So we'll see how that goes. Anyways, um, thanks as always. Appreciate you guys. Stay tuned. Here comes the intro. All right, well, we are getting there. There's some pitting here in a couple spots that need to be filled in, a couple of voids in my welds. I was going a little too fast and just didn't get as much penetration as I wanted to. But otherwise, this is covered. I only had to cut two slots in here and fold the bottom down. This side was already welded in. The top I was able to reach from the, uh, the inside coming in from under the hood. And this side, I could get everything through the hole that was here. It was actually big enough and wide enough to be able to weld everything together. And that was my... Um, <laughs> GoPro beeping. I forgot to shut it off. <laughs> anyway, once I got inside of there, I created this little piece of angle iron that attached the um, upper piece of the reinforcement to here because a piece of it I just removed completely and I had to bridge the gap. So I put that piece back in, welded it back in alongside the, uh, the hinge pocket, tops and bottoms, and then I created a patch to cover the front here. At the same time, I welded through a bunch of pinholes in here where I grafted the 56 dash onto the uh, 69 front end. So all this through here is a, just a shit ton of welding. Still got some grinding to do on here. I feel as a high spot on here. That's not a big deal. And as I said, I still got to fill in some of the pits. So what I'll do is I'll fill all that in, break out the grinder, grind it down one more time. And uh, after that, it should be good. And then I'll hit it with a coat of my famous fresh hot cat piss. That's right. The phosphoric acid does a wonderful, wonderful job of keeping the rust off. And just like the bottom, 
which we did a couple days ago, it should turn out just the same. And once that is completed, we can hang the door on it and go from there. And I'm kind of, kind of happy that this uh, this is almost done. This side, I really did butcher it. I mean, I really made a mess out of this side, and, and I know I did, because everything that I did over here was purely experimental. I didn't know what was going to fit. I didn't know how exactly it was going to fit. The good thing is that when I mounted it on here, though, I had the vertical correct. I used the, um, what was the uh, check strap uh, mount. It's actually, you can still see it here. I cut it off flush and then welded it all just together, bonded it all together. I rested the hinge pack on top of that, and that was my starting point for height. So it's real easy to match that on the other side. Uh, I know exactly how far I need to come forward, so I can match that again on the other side, and that should work out well. Once this gets squared away, then I have to patch in where the old hinges, where the stock hinges go. So I have to make a little uh, nickel-sized piece to weld into the circle here, and then another little piece of angle iron that... Um, I'm going to sandwich this all together with. I don't want to cut out what's here. I think what I'll do is I'll just lay it over this hole, flat on top of this, and then sandwich it all in here just, just the same. And I'll do the same thing down on the bottom for the one down below. That piece needs to be even smaller than the one on the top, so it should be even easier to go with. But yeah, I am rather happy with what we got going on here. Um, this is um, this is good. This is good. Still a little ugly because it needs a little more grinding. And of course, when uh, Earl gets it, if you haven't subscribed to Earl yet, duckshit.net forward slash ccc because that's where Eleanor is going to go when she gets her paint. And that could be happening in the next few weeks, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. In fact, Earl is going to do the great color reveal. Yes, that's right. What color Eleanor is going to be will be uh, determined just before Earl puts that first drop of paint on.
Okay, well I have to admit, these things turned out pretty nice. Look at that. Right now I soaked it down with my favorite friend, a little bit of phosphoric acid. Boom. <laughs> that stuff works good. It helps to convert rusted metal. It also helps to seal bare metal. And in this case, it's a whole lot of bare metal. But I got the top one filled in just like I did on the bottom one. And all those extra holes that were over here, and I mean, there was a big gaping hole over here, there was a big gaping hole on the bottom underneath here. There was a whole pile of holes up here on the top. All those are patched up. Down on the bottom, there was also a big gaping hole along the side of this, and there was all the, the uh, stock hinge holes that were on the bottom also. Those are all gone now. So just looking at the side of this thing, I mean, you gotta admit, it looks a whole lot more streamlined than it was before. The only holes that remain are the two for the hinge pockets and the one for the light switch. And I probably could have eliminated that and moved the light switch up inside the hinge and hit it up inside of there. But the idea was to make this beetle look like it's stock. And the idea of using stock switches, which are really cheap and easy to get, and like, yeah, you know, yada, yada, yada. <laughs> it just, yeah, I didn't feel the need to reinvent the wheel on that one. Once you close the door, you don't see the damn things anyway, and that was the idea. When the doors are closed, this vehicle looks streamlined and clean. Well, anyway, that's looking pretty good. I've also taken the hinges, and I planed them off, so these are nice and smooth now. You can see a lot of my welds are a little less than perfect, but that's okay. I got adequate penetration. I maxed out the uh, heat temperature on here, and this thing was all blobby and soft, so that worked out real nice. This one came out even better. Yeah, that one planed out much, much better, and the weld on that was much more consistent. It wasn't as lumpy. If I built it up a little higher when I planed it off, you never would have seen any of that. But again, this gets bolted to the inside of the door. The only part of it you're going to see is here, and even then you won't hardly even see it. Because these things get tucked up inside the car like this. I might be putting the wrong one in there. <laughs> Betcha I was. Yeah, they get tucked away like that. So when the door's covering it, you never see it. And when it opens up, again, the door covers all this. You don't see it. Unless you really want to get around here and look on purpose, you'll never notice it. And most of the stuff, as I said before, will be behind here. It'll be bolted in that way. It'll just disappear. The lower hinge, of course, goes in like that. Well, what I'm about to do is I'm about to bolt these puppies up to the door and put the door on here. And uh, we got our final fitment. And let's see how badly I screwed this thing up. <laughs> Anything could happen. All right, boys and girls, here comes the fun part. Yeah. yeah, those hinges are perfectly aligned. I can look through the hinge pin holes <laughs> and see through all of them perfectly. And get in there. Okay, now to drop in the pins. 
I wonder if these are gonna fall in or if I'm gonna have to bang the door around a little bit. Yeah, it's not quite in there. There it is. All right, bottom one's almost in. Almost all the way. Top one. Now comes the not so fun part. This is the part where you get the ratchet in there and you turn it less than an eighth of a turn because that's all the room that we've got. I don't see my ratchet over here. I had one set up with the right socket on it. I'm gonna go find it. I'll be right back. All right, I found it. This part isn't fun. I'm probably gonna wind up cutting most of it out. The top one, the hinge pin is inverted. It points up. Because of that, I have to come up from underneath, which is okay, because from the top side, I'd never be able to get the socket onto the, the well, it's essentially the bolt. Oops. Uh-oh. Okay. I'm gonna start getting mad. You know what that means? That means the camera's gonna get shut off. Ratchet fell all the way to the bottom of the black hole. And I dropped the damn ratchet again. All right, camera's going off. Just this shit. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Let's see if this door opens. It opens up straight. Oops! I got you guys on that one. I did have a small technical difficulty, and I'm not too happy about it, but the bottom hinge pin, as I was tightening it, there must have been some crap on the thread or something that started to get stuck. And when I went to turn a little more, that stupid little five millimeter uh, hex key socket started to spin. So yeah, it stripped it out. I'm gonna have to get in there and uh, pull it. And then I'll probably weld a regular bolt on top of it with a proper, yeah, a proper bolt head. I'm not a fan of these. Uh, just for any, anything where you have to make these things tight, a little five millimeter is just, it's not gonna cut it. And obviously, in this case, it, it did not. But, even though it's not tight on the bottom, it is tight on the top. Let's demonstrate how this works. Look at that. Fantastic. Straight. It does sag just a little bit, but I blame that all on that lower hinge pin, which isn't tight. It's just, it's not in place. So it has the ability for it to move a little bit. So it's gonna cause a little bit of sag on the bottom. But um, even so, there it is. It's working. Some of you want to see what it looks like on the inside. Let's get the camera in there and show you. All right, there it is closed. Here's what it looks like as it opens. I don't think a check strap is even necessary. These hinges have their own limit. They seem to be doing a pretty good job of that. But eh, I'll probably wind up putting some kind of check strap on there. But the motion of these things is so smooth now that the doors don't have any goofy flex. What's squeaking? What's squeaking? Oh, that's up in here. There's a piece of metal in here that's not welded in yet. Yeah, it's the, uh, not a piece of metal. <laughs> it's actually the door pull stick, whatever the hell it is. Part of the door linkage. Yeah, that's, that's what was making that noise. But yeah, it um, opens and closes smoothly really smoothly. I mean, I haven't even greased them yet. And I think they'll be even better once they are. Yeah, I like the way this turned out. Once it's closed, you can see they practically hide. The one on the bottom, you can just barely see it. It's pretty much flush with the side of the door. The one on the top actually is hidden. With a little bit of work in here, I can make a little cover and just completely cover it up altogether. 
or maybe I'll just run something a strip down the edge or something just to cover them both I don't know stuff to think about it's not a big deal to me but the big deal is the outside of this car is nice and smooth oh hell yeah yeah this looks nice this looks really nice hey, and here it is on the inside as we said earlier, all them holes are gone. It was a hole here, it was holes, 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 holes. Just the holes that are needed. The ones for the hinge pockets and the one for the light switch. I gotta come up with something for a check strap. I haven't figured that out yet. But these hinges do have the ability to... Um, well, actually, you know what? The ability is no longer there. You see this hole? This was intended for uh, in installing a bolt to limit it. But because of how small these A-pillars are on the Beetle, those holes, uh, they're not gonna work. <laughs> in fact you know I probably should just weld them closed if that's the case if they're not gonna work in it just yeah get rid of them all right yeah. closes up <clears throat> look at that my tools are all falling out as always <laughs> look at that smooth side of this car Wow I love it some of these gaps need a little work Earl will take care of that this door was a donor oh, door it's got a ton of Bondo on it so the door has a big belly on it, which it doesn't normally have that big of a belly on it. Just like me. I don't normally, <laughs> but right now we do. Over here, the clearance of that turned out pretty good. There's no more scraping. And that can even be played with a little bit because you can see it's a little wider over here, a little wider down here, and in the middle, it's a little close. So I can bend in the metal or perhaps even just tap it a little bit, knock it out of the way. But it clears it, and there's no problems there at all. Well, fantastic. Well, other than that little head strip mishap, uh, I think it turned out to be a pretty good day today. That door is, effectively, it's done. There's really not much left that I need to do to it other than get that pin situation sorted out. So we'll take care of that. What I'm probably gonna do is just weld another head onto the end of it, a standard, standard nut head. Just, yeah, I don't like the little five millimeters. Something like that where you need to make it tight tends to strip out. But if you're still watching today, you're probably a fan of mine, and that means you probably want some Duckman merch. That's right, duckshit.net forward slash store. You too can find a Skeeter the Duck t shirt, or you can get something with the Duckman Cycles logo, or there's a few other things too. Periodically, probably once a month or so, I might add a new design. And if you do purchase some Duckman merch, no matter what you got, if you demonstrate it in the video and talk about me, I'll send you a Duckman sticker as soon as I've got them available. Um, and that's until I call it off, so I, I haven't decided when I'm going to end that, but eventually I will. I probably need to put the disclaimer in this video, otherwise people forever are going to be asking for stickers. But you know what? Yeah, that's what we're going to do until further notice. You buy Duckman merch, put in your video, give me a shout out, talk about me a little bit, I'll send you a sticker. That's right, I'm buying my friends once again. <laughs> Thanks you guys, really appreciate it. Glad you stuck around through this video and we're gonna jump on the other side. We're also gonna finish welding on the front apron. I was hoping to do that today for a second video, but fortunately running out of daylight and I've got a party to go to tonight. So I'm gonna get my drink on because I didn't get to have one today while I've been working out here and um, we're gonna have a good night. So subscribe to Ranch Hero 302 Me. That's my buddy who's having the party tonight. Uh, some kind of poker party or something. I don't think I'll be playing poker, but I will be hanging out, listening to music and uh, having some drinks. So uh, give him a little subby. He needs it. He's just under 2,000 subscribers. I'd like to push him over the threshold of that. So if you guys could get over there, Ranch Hero 302 Me, his name's on the bottom of the screen here. Get over there, give him a subby, and he and I will really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.